I've said this many, many times. It's not what life brings you. It's what you decide to get out of life by you working towards it. Life isn't just gonna be like an Amazon package and drop it off at your front doorstep. All I gotta do is bring it in the house and unpack it. Boom, there's success. Because long-term thinkers are doers. They're not complainers, they're doers. What do I gotta do? What do I gotta do to get out of debt? It's complainers, guess who they attract? A bunch of other complainers. Blamers, guess who they attract? Other blamers for their pity party. The harder question, the harder virtue is becoming a doer. Because guess who doers attract? They attract other doers. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here. Hey, to you from Dallas, Texas. And if you haven't done so already, please click like, like this video, and make sure you hit subscribe. Because our next goal is to get to 150,000 subscribers. So therefore, we can award a church charity or nonprofit $5,000 on behalf of you. Yes, the squad to help them help other people. So what's on my mind right now is the heart and character of how people make decisions between short-term and long-term decisions. Short-term and long-term decisions. Now, in my 23 years as an entrepreneur, and more specifically in the inside the insurance industry, I've seen both mentalities. I've, I've had it myself. I've got adult kids now and I'm coaching them through it, a short-term and long-term mentality, is because oftentimes people have such grand, a couple of ways to look at it. People have such grandiose visions about what they want to accomplish. We call it having their heads in the clouds, but in the meantime, they need to have their boots on the ground. So head in the clouds, yes, great vision, what it's gonna look like, what life is gonna look like, but at the same time, you gotta do work today, keeping your boots on the ground. And I've gotten caught up in this type of thinking to myself. So I'm not talking to you because I've never made mistakes ever before in my life. Because listen, I've openly said this, I'm very open and transparent when it comes to this. I said, I've taken my entire 30s repaying the mistakes of my 20s. And now that I'm in my late 40s, I recognize now I should have been enjoying this in my 30s and not my late 40s because of these differences between short-term versus long-term type thinking. So here's five things I wanna share with you what's on my mind in terms of the differences between short-term thinkers and long-term thinkers and who wins at the end of the day. So number one, short-term thinkers think like this. Number one, immediate success. They want success now. They want salary now. They want commission now. You know, when I was leaving the military base, it was one of the questions I asked what my career was after the military. I walked off the military base. I walked in the insurance office. I worked into a real estate mortgage office. I asked one simple question. Who's gonna pay me the soonest? So that's part of a decision, but that's too just, if it's a finite decision, I'm gonna make a decision just on what pays me now. In other words, if you think immediate success right away, in other words, you can be bought. You can always find somebody that's gonna pay you more, or somebody's gonna give you more, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever the case may be, it's too short term thinking and they get sold on this. Well, do you realize how much money that person currently that you're working with right now is stealing from you? It's easy to buy into those fears, especially if you're only thinking short term. In other words, you can always be bought. There's always somebody gonna be richer. There's always somebody that's gonna be bigger. There's always somebody there that's willing to open up the checkbook and try to woo woo you into coming over with them if you're only thinking too short term. We see this right now. Right now, the NFL season is over with. Pretty soon, free agency is gonna begin. You're gonna see a bunch of players going from one team to another who is highly touted and highly regarded at one team He's a free agent now, and because this is a business decision, they can consider offers from other teams, and guess what? They might take that offer from another team because you're willing to pay them more money. Facts, okay. However, what is it that you want as a player? Do you want to get paid, or do you want to be in a championship? Nobody ever remembers somebody who got a lot of money and never won a championship. People always remember, history books will always remember those who win championships. Michael Jordan is a great example of this. For 12 years, Michael Jordan was not the number one paid player of the NBA. He won three, four, five championships already. It wasn't until his 12th, 13th season that he became the number one paid player in the NBA. 12, 13 seasons later, he wasn't the number one paid player by the Chicago Bulls. Other people were getting paid more money, but who remembers Michael Jordan? Everybody. Who remembers the highest paid player during the 90s and early 2000s. Nobody, unless they had a championship. So if you're thinking too short term, you get caught up in this immediate success mentality versus a long-term thinker, here's how they think. They think greater success. 
They're willing to say, you know what? If I'm not getting it paid now, is it going to lead to something greater? Is it going to lead to something that's much more beneficial, not only for myself, but for everybody around me? And so short-term thinkers, immediate success. Long-term thinkers, greater success. Number two, short-term thinkers only trust themselves. They only trust their past experiences. Okay, we've all been hurt. Whether it's been a relationship that you've been in, a financial decision you made and you regret it, but it's only your experiences. Versus long-term thinkers, here's who they trust. They trust wisdom from people who have been there, done that, and are living a life that they want to live because they get what they call wise counsel, wisdom from those that are counseling them that are actually living the life they want to live. So if you're locked on a life that you want to live, the outcome of it all, it shouldn't dissuade you, the short-term thinkers that talk about complaining and all these different things of all the hurt and pain that they've experienced because they've only done it themselves. Because here's one thing, whether you go from relationship to relationship, company to company, career to career, church to church, one thing that will always follow you are your habits, your beliefs, and your behaviors. And if you don't change it, guess what will also follow you too as well? An unchanged reputation. And a reputation is very, very valuable. What do you think a credit score reflects? It's your reputation with the banks and how you pay your bills, how long you've paid your bills, whether you've been on time, whether you've been diligent with your finances, whether you're overspending on credit, that's what a credit score shows. Now, how diligent are you? What is your reputation? Are you a short-term thinker? Because here's how short-term thinkers are. Well, come at me, come sue me, send me to collections. Sure, they can do that. They'll send you to collections. And in the meantime, guess what? You win, because you don't have to pay the money. Guess what, long-term, guess what doesn't win? You, because you can't buy that house. You can't buy that car. Your insurance on your car and house and other insurance policies you might purchase because they run your credit these days, Maybe more because you didn't pay that bill you did from five years ago because you decided to ditch T-Mobile and not pay that bill. These things eventually catch up to you even though short term, you win, you don't pay the money. It doesn't leave your pocket, doesn't leave your bank account. But eventually over time, it will catch up to you. Which leads me to number three. Short term thinkers only think in the moment. They think for right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now this, right now that, right now this. They can't think past the week ahead of them. They can't think past a month ahead of them. They can't think past a year from now. They can't think past that. It's right now, today. What's my life gonna look like? My decisions based on today, that's it. Right now, here's what I'm not getting. Here's what everybody else is getting. I'm not getting this, but they never ask why. And worse, everybody else is the problem, just not them. Now, a long-term thinker thinks, hey, what's my next moves? I may not like where I'm at right now, but what's the next moves? Or I appreciate this early success. I appreciate this early victory, but what's next? What's next? What's your next move? What's your next five moves? Our CEO, founder of PHP Agency wrote a book called Your Next Five Moves. Right now it's being translated to 14, 15 different languages because he talks about not just where you're at today, but what is your next five moves? Because an amateur, an amateur just knows the next couple moves ahead of them. Maybe one, maybe two, number three. But a grandmaster, if you look at a chess champion, a grandmaster that understands the game of chess, because what type of game are you playing in life? Are you playing checkers? Or you're playing chess. Well, a grandmaster in the game of chess understands his next 14, 15, 16 moves. And he's just baiting the other player to play into those moves. Even though the first one, two, three, four, five moves may not be 100% favorable in the moment, but the next 10, 12, 14, 15, 16 moves, psh, can't keep up with them. You can't beat them. Because they already thought about this move years before. They thought ahead years before. So how are you thinking? Number four, short-term thinkers think immediate gratification. I'm getting paid more now. Long-term thinkers think about delayed gratification. Short-term thinkers are like, I wanna go party this Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Long-term thinkers are like, you know what? If I invest this Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I might make something of myself three, four, five years from now. And then who's gonna be partying then and where and with what and with who, you see? My 20s, I remember my 20s. It was a big blur on Fridays. Saturdays and Sundays. I say it openly and hopefully you don't judge me for it, but it was not a very happy part of my life. And uh, just coming out the military, not necessarily knowing what my next moves were. All I needed to know is I need to pay the bills today. That's all I was thinking about. But by the way, I'm just sharing with you these different virtues and thought process and experiences because I was at one time a short term thing. I get involved in arguments. I get into heated arguments and discussions because I'm trying to win that battle in that moment. 
And even though I might win that battle, guess what I don't win? I don't win the war. And so when I'm looking at the long-term things versus the short-term things, I'm thinking about those that think more instant gratification, just add water, stick it in a microwave. Okay, I get instant success. Cool, it lasts for a moment. Or what's better for you from a cooking analogy? What's better for you, the microwave or a private chef that takes the time, the love, the passion, the energy to actually cook you a meal from the oven, from the pan, to your kitchen table? Which would you prefer? And last but not least, the difference between short-term thinkers and long-term thinkers is one, short-term thinkers complain. Complain, 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 blame, blame, blame. That's all they do. And thinking that somebody's gonna help them. In their complaining, they think that somebody's gonna help them. Like they're not getting out of life what they wanted. Like, I can't wait what 2022 is gonna bring me. And I've said this many, many times. It's not what life brings you. It's what you decide to get out of life by you working towards it. Life isn't just gonna be like an Amazon package and drop it off at your front doorstep. All I gotta do is bring it in the house and unpack it. Boom, there's success. Because long-term thinkers are doers. They're not complainers, they're doers. What do I gotta do? What do I gotta do to get out of debt? What do I gotta do to start a side business? What do I gotta do to go full-time in that side business? What do I gotta do to make sure I'm positive and positive cash? What do I gotta do to make 250,000, 500,000 million dollars in income? What do I gotta do to make sure I create a lot of jobs? What do I gotta do to solve this problem in our community today? What do I have to do in spite of the problems? Because complainers, guess who they attract? A bunch of other complainers. Blamers, guess who they attract? Other blamers for their pity party. The harder question, the harder virtue is becoming a doer. Because guess who doers attract? They attract other doers. I was a complainer and I was a blamer. And because we've been through a lot of those situations and realized that what we wanted out of life was not coming through by complaining and blaming, we decided to make a shift. So I hope when you watch this video and you caught yourself, man, I might be complaining, I might be doing, I'm complaining about the president, I'm complaining about this uh, business situation, I might be complaining about this boss in my job. No, 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 at the end of the day, it's about you, you the doer. What are you going to do about it? I'll be off and say, well, Matt, you know, I made 10 phone calls, not working. I made 20 phone calls, not working. I made 30 phone calls, I made 10 sales calls. I pitched 20 people, I pitched 30 people. Nobody says yes. Hello, that's nothing. That's nothing. Talk to me when we have 300 rejections. Now there's a problem. Now you gotta adjust. Maybe you're using the wrong verbiage or delivery style. Now you got a problem with 300 people saying no to you or this is not right or this is an issue. Now you got a problem, but 10, 20, 30 people are telling you you're doing the wrong thing? And, and oftentimes, again, back to social media, oftentimes people, are, uh, uh, they get the most shine are the trolls. There's been an era of trolls then the last 10, 15 years, they've gotten a lot of shine because they're funny, they're entertaining, but that is not a sustainable business model. You don't get away for the long term by complaining and blaming and bashing and stealing. Guess what happens to that? You create a generation behind you that learns how to steal and bash and doesn't have your best interests at heart. So with that being said, guys, I'll know your thoughts, your questions, your feedback, put it in the comments section below. So before I let you go, please check out this video here, Fireside Chats at, uh, in Montana with my CEO, founder, friend, and mentor, Patrick Ben David. And check out this other video here, right here, how to establish values and principles that will make you a millionaire. That being said, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, like this video, hit subscribe to our channel and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue live smart, continue live smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.